Welcome everybody to our webinar about Libra and cryptocurrency and blockchain, uh, <clears throat> hosted by Northwestern Polytechnic University. The, uh, this is a little bit of information about myself and uh, the, the rest of the uh, you know, information you can find it on the screen. Uh, I have two books coming and uh, one of them already in the market and the second one is coming in August. Uh, this is this is my motto when it comes to understand any kind of technology. You have to explain it in a simple term so you can understand it enough. Um, blockchain is uh, uh, is one of the four technologies of the IBAC uh, combination or the IBAC pack. Uh, that one is dealing with Internet of Things, blockchain, and artificial intelligence use and cybersecurity. And to understand it, we can talk about you know, IoT as it feels and blockchain remembers and uh, AI thinks and cybersecurity protects. So, but what is, what is honestly, what is the blockchain? If you look at the definition of blockchain, there's a long definition, uh, you know, in, in Wikipedia and we're going to cover that. But blockchain itself is a software. And whenever you talk about this concept that block, blockchain is a software, that relaxes a lot of uh, confusion with people because you're talking about blockchain and you look at it and you have no idea what is it. Is, is it a hardware, is it a software, is it a combination? What does that mean? Is that box what everybody think that this uh, technology is uh, meant to you know, change the world? But what is it? It's software. It's basically lines of codes and those codes will do specific functions and it's gonna impact so many of the, of the people uh, you know, using it. Uh, in Wikipedia, the, the blockchain has uh, a very specific definition about open distributed ledger and the rest of the definition, record transactions between two parties in an efficient and you can verify that in a permanent way. So that is, that's, that is the, the common uh, uh, definition of blockchain. For me, when I look at the blockchain, I look at the blockchain from the perspective of how can I make it uh, you know, clear to everybody, whether you're technical or, or non-technical, it doesn't make any difference here. The best definition I have seen so far is actually came from a professor at MIT, and this is his definition. This is, this is how he defined it. Uh, it is a combination of two things, uh, cryptography and human logic. Cryptography and human logic, the cryptography is what we have now of the uh, you know, encryptions, uh, hardware and software, firewalls, you know, password, uh, user, uh, you know, username, all the credential you use, all of what we have now is in the first half. You can add at the top of that one, the human logic. The human logic is the consensus. And last night I had a presentation, uh, a wonderful presentation by, uh, by three startup to my student at uh, Stanford and, and, and it, everything we, we talk about it is it was was about how can you use identity uh, uh, in blockchain and uh, and if you attended the the presentations which lasted for two hours you will see that what we taught what they talked about it uh, the the founders of that three uh, startup is talking about the human logic not about the cryptography or not about the encryption but the encryption is is there it's available and we are using it already. It's the consensus we, we need from using, you know, uh, you know, uh, something like uh, uh, the digital wallet, which it, it is uh, hot or cold, and or using some identity that will define you by an avatar or define you by certain parameters, uh, like your en uh, enzyme in your body that will be the definition for you as your identity, and the consensus of multiple people on on your identity by confirming you. So you add the human logic to the concept of security we have now, and you will get the blockchain uh, underlying uh, concept. Blockchain has five components, uh, cryptography, peer-to-peer -peer network, consensus mechanism, the ledger where you can save the information, and the validation rules. The validation rules is, is something like we use it for the smart contracts and for some of the way for us to uh, verify certain certain events. Uh, the uh, if you never if you uh, you haven't seen any kind of encryption uh, before this is an example of the SHA two fifty six the the one that used by by the blockchain that is that is the very important you know concept I want to make sure everybody understand it you have the text you hash it means you encrypt it and then you got that hash sum or that you know that string of numbers and letters and this is what is actually stored in that software which is the blockchain and sent and received. 
the sequence of the blocks you start with the Genesis block first, which has all the components, the timestamp, the index, the previous hash. There's no previous hash, and then you go to the next one. Whatever you have in the previous one will be encrypted and then added to the next one, and so on. So if anything happened at any of the stages there, everything after that is considered as you know invalid. Then you use something called fork. So you are really getting off the the chain and you're starting a new chain. And, and there are two types of them, soft and hard uh, fork, which is uh, another topic. An example of the blockchain uh, software is, is what you see here on the screen, you see in the, and if you, if you pay attention to the components of the blockchain, you're gonna see things like the timestamp, transactions, previous hash, and timestamp, all of these things mentioned as part of the five components of the blockchain. So when you are constructing a block, you're gonna use the five components to define that and this is an example of the uh, smart contract uh, written in Solidity. And if you are really into smart contracts, please, you know, spend some time learning Solidity. It's really a very easy, straightforward uh, programming language, especially, especially if you have done programming before. The programming languages, there are tons of them. It's not just only the one you have on the, sc on the screen. There are new uh, programming languages like Move Language, which is created for Libra by, by Facebook. But those are the common ones. C++ used to build uh, Bitcoin. Python is famous for use, uh, as, as one of the programming languages used for, uh, for the uh, blockchain. And JavaScript is my favorite when it comes to building uh, blockchain because you can interface that one with the web and you can have all the... Uh, browsers, uh, co you know, compatibility, and solidity for smart contract and Java. The highest, the highest number of patents, and this is recent, IBM is holding the highest one, and no wonder why they are in the market and they are really ahead of everybody with their hyperledger. And then you talk about Bank of America, and then you talk about Walmart, and you can look at the different companies. And this is filers, which means they file it, it could be pending, approved, this is the, the combination uh, of all the uh, patents for for the blockchain, and this is this thing you look at it is uh, we're talking about something in the United States. I mean, if you go outside the United States, you're going to find uh, Alibaba, you can find Tencent. Uh, they're ahead with the number of the patents. The when you compare, and this is a common question that I hear all the time. People ask, uh, you know, the difference or, or the differences between the blockchain and the database. I'm, I'm going to spend, you know, a few minutes just talking about it to make sure that it's clear to everybody. Uh, the uh, very quickly, the uh, for the blockchain compare or versus the uh, database for authority, you have the administrator, which is the controlling the database. While you're know, talking about the blockchain, this is decentralized, no centralized approach. Uh, there are options. There are some some exceptions or special cases of the private blockchain, and that is utilize some kind of centralization because you control the number of the nodes. The architects for the database they have client server, the the one known uh, architects used for the internet, and the blockchain is the distributed ledger. Handling the data, the blockchain uh, uh, utilize read and write operations. That's it. You, uh, you, once you write, that's it. And you can read, uh, and you can write in the new block. While and you look, if you look at the database, uh, you're gonna see, you know, the famous crude one, which is create, read, update, and delete. Those are the functions. If you took any database classes, you know that the major, the major functions or activities for the for the dealing with the database. The blockchain support integrity. While you're talking about the database, it's actually opened for malicious actors. And, and today or yesterday, uh, Capital One announced that somebody accessed their database and stole the information of 106 million uh, uh, users or clients, consumers between the United States and Canada, 100 million in the United States, 6 million in Canada. And, and, and the crazy thing about this incident is they, this person who used Actually, he used to work at Amazon uh, Web Services, posted that and uploaded that one to GitHub. And, and she was uh, bragging about that, all the information available in that account. Uh, public uh, transparency, it is public. Uh, the blockchain public can offer transparency. You can look at the code. You can look, you can look at the encrypted information. 
you can look at the transaction encrypted, but you don't know from who uh, who sent it to to where. That's that's all encrypted. But you know that there is a ten thousand you know Bitcoin moved from one place to the other. Database is uh, only the administrator who and whoever got the privileges to access it, and the cost it's a little bit expensive when it comes to the blockchain, especially if we are using uh, proof of work. Um, for the database, it's been here for a long time, so there's so many variations, so it's, 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 uh, it's really cheap compared to the blockchain. The performance, it's slow for the blockchain because of the consensus concept where all the node has to sync and agree. Database, it's extremely fast, and, and there is a lot of scalability offered for the database. So this is, this is just to, to make sure that everybody you know, see and understand the difference between the two uh, technologies. Uh, some of the quick uses here uh, for the blockchain, and, and I'm going to go over all of them, but you, you, will, you will recognize some of them like it's used with the Internet of Things. Uh, it's actually used for digitizing the documents, um, uh, digital identity, uh, the order fulfillment, all of these, and just an example of the application of blockchain. Whatever digital assets you have, you can code it, you know, upload it to the blockchain. Once it's written, it's fixed. It's permanent. It's gonna change, and you move on to the next to the next you know uh, uh, part of your uh, digital asset. Three types, major types of the blockchain. Uh, public one, pub, the public uh, blockchain, which is the Bitcoin, the Ethereum, and the rest of the, and and the the most famous two, the biggest one is the Bitcoin and the Ethereum, and the private one, which is built by the companies. They talk to companies like uh, uh, IBM. Uh, Microsoft, Amazon, and they build, they give them something called blockchain as a service where they can build it uh, and assign the nodes. And out of that one, they have, they know the nodes. It's not like the case of the public uh, uh, blockchain. And that is the private. And there is something in between, which is called the hybrid or the federated blockchain, which you will have multiple private uh, blockchain, but they can exchange the information. It's not controlled by one item or entity. It's controlled by organization. And this organization can, uh, will allow the, the information to be transferred between the different private uh, blockchain using technologies like, for example, Cosmo. That's one of the technologies used for that. So when, when, when you talk about uh, the uh, hybrid or the federated, it is, it's used by financial institution when they have different banks. It's used by organization when they have different companies working you know, under the same umbrella uh, government. The same thing is dealing with this because you have different uh, you know, departments. So they have their own private blockchain and they can, and, and they can control that. It uh, all started by, by uh, this paper or with this paper, which is uh, by Satomushi Nakamoto, real, not real, and real, nobody knows. Uh, and that was in 2008, Bitcoin, a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash. Uh, in his paper, seven pages, if I correctly remember, uh, no mention of blockchain. Everything he talked about it was the Bitcoin and peer-to-peer. It's a very fascinating uh, paper, and uh, please spend some time reading it. And also, if you have time, you can go to their uh, to his website, and it has you know tons of information about Bitcoin and about blockchain. Uh, the history of the blockchain as we progress from the 1990s, because that was the starting point of thinking about distributed systems, all the way until 2018, 2019, which is the implementation. We moved from the case of you know, explain it to me to the case of how can I use it in, you know, in my uh, uh, company, in my organization, uh, which means I need to see a pilot program. That's the stage you are in in 2019. Uh, the, the stack of the blockchain, which is good for you if you are in the software industry, uh, each, each one of the uh, four layers we're talking about here is actually an opportunity for you to add something to the blockchain, whether it is an interface or a user experience, um, uh, adapts, you know, or a, a smart contract or decentralized applications or the protocols used for, uh, for the uh, blockchain uh, protocol. All of this at the top of the internet or TCP IP infrastructure. So if you really want to look at the concept of how can I add value to the blockchain, where just Pick the layer where you're gonna have, you want to have your startup, you want to have your research, in, and and just attack that part, and that will that will help you to focus on which one 
you can do uh, you know some kind of uh, uh, addition to the blockchain uh, cryptocurrency uh, this is this is the main topic of today the cryptocurrency are really a fascinating concept because it's easy to um, uh, it's easy actually to make and uh, if you look at the countries that um, has the more uh, or the, the citizens of the countries that they hold more of the uh, of the cryptocurrency you're going to see that turkey is number one then brazil colombia argentina south africa and the list all the way down to japan and the cryptocurrencies they have that because for so many reasons it is it is uh, believe in the in the technology or sometimes it is a more uh, stable way for them or or easy for them to exchange the money without going through the central bank that will save money for them in the fees and 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 other purposes but i'm, I'm going to use this uh, this chart again to just explain why libra is really trying to help with this problem now uh, in my class at uh, uh, stanford uh, continuous studies and at uh, san jose state i asked my student to create their own uh, cryptocurrency uh, the tokens i mean and and uh, Two days ago, I was contacted by one of the, uh, you know, uh, one of the radio station asking me about about uh, Libra and about uh, you know question about it. And while I was talking to the reporter, uh, I was creating my own coins, my own tokens. So uh, I have a program that I give it to my students, and they run it. They and then they create their uh, a million uh, coins with their names. And this is how easy it is. It took if you have a, if you have an average computer. I'm not talking about. Uh, high level, you can create your own cryptocurrency in three seconds. And if you look at the Ether scan here, which is the browser used to to look at the transaction, you're going to see that I have one million Banafa coin. Actually, I have six or seven million of them. Every time we have a class, we do we we create. So I can change the name to whatever you want. So this this is how easy it is. Three seconds, and you are a millionaire. Three seconds, and you are a billionaire. Uh, Facebook uh, built Libra on the case of uh, uh, stable coin and uh, stable coin is one for one that's what it is now let's let's look at the best definition of Libra and this is going to make it easier for everybody to understand why Libra is really uh, you know uh, getting the attention of everybody beside the fact that it's coming from a big company like Facebook Libra is something between Bitcoin and PayPal it's uh, it's a cryptocurrency without the fluctuations and uh, speculations of the Bitcoin and it is a payment service like PayPal without the fees. So you have the cryptocurrency concept, which is basically digital money. You can send it and receive it, exchanges for services and products and, you know, uh, and with, with the merchants. At the same time, uh, without any fluctuations of the Bitcoin that goes like crazy, 10,000 and then 3,000 down, 1,000 up. If you use PayPal, there are some fees included there, no fees. It's actually a fraction of a cent to be clear about that when we do this kind of transaction. So this is, this is, this is, this is a good way to look at Libra. Uh, the, the basis of the project of Libra itself is the Facebook has about 2.4 billion users. Uh, Visa has uh, issues about 2 billion, more than 2 billion credit cards. And they have 40 million, more than 40 million merchants using their services. Uh, Vodafone, the well-known brand in Europe, have 44 million customers, and Uber has 91 million riders. Uh, so this base, if you add the numbers plus the other companies that join the Libra.org, which is the organization that will organize, control uh, the Libra cryptocurrency, you were talking about something close to, uh, you know, four billion. 4 billion people, 4 billion users that uh, Libra will be available for them. Uh, Facebook, when they announced Libra on, uh, uh, you know, on the 18th, uh, what they have done is uh, they, have a, they have a group of companies. Each company has to pay $10 million uh, minimum to get the membership. And you can recognize some of the famous names here, whether it's the MasterCard, eBay, Spotify, profit, non-profit, banking, non-banking. You can recognize them. They're 28, including Facebook. And Facebook is the only one who uh, created their own uh, digital wallet, which is the Calibra. And, uh, and, that is, and that's the only wallet that can be used with their two applications used, uh, that will use Libra, which is WhatsApp and Messenger. They're not going to allow any other uh, 
company to to add their own wallet to the to the two applications. And in the next, uh, in, in this slide, you will see them divided according to their, uh, you know, industry, according to their uh, activities from payments, nonprofit, uh, music, and social media, and so on. So this is will give you an idea. They're trying to build this coalition so they can say we are not only Facebook because they have the bad history of uh, you know privacy in the 2018 and before. So they they say okay, we have other 27. Their goal is to go to a hundred members. So they'll have a billion you know, dollar minimum as uh, a starting investment in this project. Uh, and that will be within five years, they will have the, the 100 members uh, join the Libra organization.org in Switzerland. They're not gonna make any money with Calibra, which is the digital wallet. So what they're thinking about it, and this is what they stated, what they stated in their white paper what they stated in their white paper is saying that nowadays or the starting of Libra will be for payments. But later on, what we'd like to do is to monetize Calibra so we can have investment, we have lending. So there are actually a plan within five years to go from just uh, you know, being uh, used for sending and receiving money to now providing financial services. Um, and uh, the whole idea of going into the cryptocurrency and using the cryptocurrency and the two applications or two apps of, uh, of Facebook, the WhatsApp and the, uh, and the messenger is to mimic and to uh, copy uh, WeChat, the app, the famous app in China, where if you go to China, you understand that you almost do everything with WeChat. And I remember, uh, you know, a debate I have with uh, on NPR with with the reporter from from New York Times about this concept, which is Facebook is trying to go from being just the uh, social and communication tool with some you know markets here and there to become an e-commerce, a full flag e-commerce website where you can use it for everything, and this is and this is their way to transfer themselves and add a revenue beside increasing the base of the users. They tried that before and they failed. The, the, uh, before they have uh, some currency used with WhatsApp and, and, and Messenger, they call it a credit, and it didn't, it didn't fly and actually failed miserably. Uh, the companies who will invest in this and, and be part of this one, they will get their revenue from dividends on the interest. Because if I want to buy a thousand Libra, I have to take a thousand dollars from my account and deposit it, you know, with Facebook or with the Libra organization, and it's going to stay there. I'm not going to earn, earn any interest on that. It's there, and then what I'm going to do with it is they will give me a thousand Libra. I can take that Libra and buy whatever I want with all the merchant, all the companies that will accept Libra. So this is how they look at it. And, and again, connect this to how many people are available in the companies, we talk about them, close to 4 billion users. Uh, if Libra got hacked and proven unreliable, that's gonna, be, you know, that's gonna be a big thing for them. That's why they are very careful about introducing the concept of Libra. And, and just last week, they've been slapped, and I'm talking about Facebook, with the 5 billion fine by, you know, by FTC for their role in the Cambridge Analytica. So they know that they're under the microscope and there are many of the, um, uh, many of the uh, government organizations, uh, they're looking at them and they're watching what they're doing. Uh, going deep into the technical part of Libra as a blockchain looking under the hood here, the, the size of the transaction is uh, 5K. So it's very small. And the speed, the transaction per second, it's a thousand. And that is their starting point. I mean, a thousand is okay, uh, especially if you're talking about uh, you know a transaction with. It depends on the internet connection and and other things. But companies like Visa and Mastercard, they're not going to take this one as a credit card or instant um, approval because uh, with them you need a minimum of twenty four thousand transaction per second. Uh, they say that you need uh, a connection of uh, 40 uh, meg and, uh, and you need 16 terabyte as uh, uh, you know, SSD hard drive to be part of that. If third over third of the, of the nodes hacked, then the uh, liberalorganization.org 
will uh, would hold the uh, all the transaction and fork. That means reset and start again. And this is this is what you have. Okay, what happened? Okay. Uh, who is who is playing with this? Somebody is using the. Okay. I see two lines here. I don't know who's who's playing with those lines, but anyway. Okay, so fine. Uh, currently, uh, is uh, is is a private. It's actually a private uh, network, uh, private blockchain. But their goal is to have that as uh, in the future to have this one as uh, a public one, so anybody can join that in the future without any without any problems. The language used for. Uh, for the programming here is called move and that uh, that programming language is still in progress it's not out yet they have some of the you know they're still working on the libraries and the classes and it's, but they're using these until they get a full complete tested program language they have few you know they have few uh, of the uh, uh, pieces of that program language mentions in their white paper so Delibra is it's, it's an open source too. It used the Apache 2.0 license. Any developer can build the app for that and work with the move code. So uh, the prototype launched today. Now there is a test network. You can you can test it. So that that will help you. I I managed to get some of the examples from that white paper to show you the examples of uh, of this uh, you know of the program language. Let me let me see if I can get rid of this. Okay, There's some weird stuff here. Okay, so let's go back to this this part. I don't know what are the the, the three lines. I don't know if two lines here I have no idea who who draw those lines. Uh, the first one, the first uh, part of the code is peer to peer payment, and the second one is uh, the deposit of Libra that show you the steps, and it's a very simple language. And if it makes sense to me when I look at it, I can understand it. I can I know exactly. What does it mean? And the thing when you are withdrawal of Libra. So the program language is easy, and it is it is one of the things that I hope we can have it very quickly, so we can, you know, we can uh, add it to the, uh, uh, you know, curriculum for uh, uh, for the blockchain in the in the school. Uh, they have uh, Libra Association. They're working with the Hacker One, so they can have something called. Uh, you know, bug county system just to discover the glitches and discover the the problems with the with the Libra, until they have all the, the all the parts of the move program language done. Rust programming language will be will be used until we get that. Okay, thanks to whoever removed that that line. So in a nutshell, Libra itself is a decentralized open source blockchain. It is a very low when it comes to fluctuations. It's used a smart contract platform. Uh, some of the myths about Libra, and I'm gonna go over that one very quickly. I don't know what's, what's the time. Yeah, we still have time. Um, the first one is that it's, uh, it's a private permission blockchain. That's not, that's not, uh, that's not true. It's, uh, it's gonna change in five years. It's gonna be a public one. So that's gonna open the door for, uh, for many people to join it, including, and that will be competing with uh, the Bitcoin and Ethereum and uh, uh, Stellar and, and the rest of the public ones. So the second one is, it's actually pegged or supported by fiat and the US dollar. It's, it's, it's a collection of, of, of uh, currencies. There will be fluctuations, definitely, because even the, the, the current uh, fiat uh, currencies and, and fiat currencies is the currencies that printed by the governments. So it goes up and down. It's in the market, and this is this is what happened with it. So this is the case of of uh, looking at the fluctuation will be minimum, but it is not just because it is pegged by the U.S. dollar or the fiat. That's no fluctuation. The second one is uh, money in the bank, and uh, the money whatever you deposit, whatever the twenty eight or a hundred members of the uh, of the Libra organization uh, deposit. It's not going to stay there. What's going to happen with it is they what they're going to do is they're going to use that one to uh, you know to invest. There will be a small part to keep the cash just in case people you know want to convert Libra into cash and take their money. And this is this is another problem we'll talk about in a second. So the only difference that banks pay you interest and in your deposit in the case of Libra you don't 
you don't get any any interest in that. You get the Libra instead of that. Uh, there are some problems with the Facebook uh, currency. Number one, it is uh, it is complicated, and Facebook actually admitted that. And 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 I'm not gonna break news to you, uh, you know, uh, guys and ladies here. But in the uh, in the filing, the quarter file last week by Facebook, they even mentioned in that paragraph and posted that one on my LinkedIn. Uh, there is a possibility that Libra will never see the light. They say there is so many complications, there is so many challenges. Uh, we're, we're, we're trying to overcome this one, and we can or we can't. It depends. You know, there will be the case here. Okay. The second problem is that uh, since the Civil War, the United States separated the banking and the commerce. And what we are seeing here is actually a mix of both of them. And that is a very, you know, that, that's a problem we are trying to avoid. And Libra is bringing them together. The third problem is that the, uh, uh, what if everybody decided to cash their Libra? Do we have enough cash for everybody? Like run on the bank. How can we deal with something like that? How is that going to impact the, the economy of the world? And the, the fourth one is talking about using the dollar or using the currency in case of sanctions against other countries, or you don't, wanna, you, you don't want this country to deal with and buy your product. Libra can, you know, shortcuts the whole thing. And, the, and then it's avoid all the central uh, banks and, and transaction between the individuals and organizations can be done without the knowledge of the, of the government. Another problem with this is this. If you look at this, website and this is an existing website and and i'm not going to give you that website because i don't want anybody to get you know um, fooled by this but if you look at this website you will see that they're actually saying buy sell libra coins online well libra is not out yet still not out yet i mean it's 2020 that's the earliest they're talking about but there are websites that saying we're going to sell you libra now remember you know, when I showed you, if you recall, when I showed you that there are a million Banafa coins, they can create the same thing. And they can have all these digital coins and they can sell them and name them Libra. That's a problem. And there are so many of those websites now. They're trying to cash on the excitement of people for Libra and, and, and fool them with selling them something that does not exist. And a lot of people actually did that. They think that this, okay, I'm going to buy it now. When Libra is out, the price will go up. Ethereum is taking a good you know, step to uh, curb something like this. If you use the MetaMask to access you know, the plugin for, for accessing the blockchain network, this is the message you're going to get. So Ethereum is saying that this is uh, phishing detection. This website is really on the list of the website that yeah, we don't want you to try. Because if you transfer any coin, any cryptocurrency from your account to this website, we cannot guarantee that this is the real one. Facebook was warned about it. They've been informed about it, and they removed uh, the uh, uh, the pages and and uh, of the uh, of the the one that we talked about it before. They removed they remove it out of the uh, uh, you know after Facebook, and they're warning their everybody about it. So this is another problem. Now now this is a byproduct of fake information or or disinformation or or misinformation. Uh, some other challenges generally facing the blockchain here. Uh, the first one is, if you look at them, it's the 51, you know, uh, percent attack. That's that's a win-known consensus mechanism. If you can convince 51 percent or more of the nodes on the blockchain to change their information, then you actually control it. Uh, private key security, the uh, perception about the blockchain as as only cryptocurrency, the double spending problem where you can have two transactions, the same the same transaction, you do it at the same time, and and process. So you you double you know you you double your uh, activities and the the transaction privacy leak, uh, the criminal smart contract where there is a mistake in the in the smart contract and keep in mind that smart contract is a software. Uh, and also the problems with the, with the smart contract itself and the optimization of the smart contract. All of these things are related to the developing or the developers part of the, of the blockchain. In addition to that, you have challenges like scalability. And we discussed that or we touched on that when we talk about uh, blockchain and database. 
and how the problem of scalability persists and the problem of scalability, why? Because in order for you to have a uh, scalability, uh, you, you know, you, you, you have for the database, it's easy for you to, to expand it, to scale up. For the, for the blockchain, it's gonna be slow because you have to inform all the nodes about all the activities. There is a solution for that, which is used by database, something called sharding, and sharding is one, the horizontal sharding will not have all the information of the activities on, on all the blockchain. There will be a certain, you know, a certain nodes that will have the full record. Processing time uh, to inform and sync, uh, processing power, especially if you're using uh, something like the uh, proof of work, that will be another one. Storage, regulations, uh, regulation is coming, and if you are following the news, you see that the government is going after them, and I'm talking about the cryptocurrency, uh, you know, uh, world. They, and uh, I last night I showed my student at Stanford a letter from the IRS sent to people who uh, have uh, cryptocurrency, asking them to pay their taxes, and they're giving them a warning about this. And that letter is just just sent to everybody. They have the information about you, so it's not like something, uh, you know. Uh, uh, something new. Okay, I don't know what happened. Uh, public reception, lack of skill staff. That's that's a, that's a continuous problem, and this is why we have webinars, we have workshop, we have you know uh, schools that are teaching the blockchain. And the first mile and the last mile problem before you enter the data is the data correct? It's garbage in, garbage out. And after you receive the data, can somebody change that one if it's outside the blockchain uh, network? And the current solution go quickly over this, you'll see that the Hyperledger has the highest uh, transaction per second. The throughput of them is uh, over 2,000. And then the rest of the other options are very slow from something like the Ethereum to about 20 transactions per second to Quorum. Quorum is a private network, a private blockchain that created by JP Morgan and, and Ethereum to compete with, uh, with Hyperledger. Uh, in order for you to get into this field of blockchain, you need a major uh, skill set, four of them in general as an umbrella. Number one is you need to have that business sense. Uh, this, because, because blockchain is not just the technical part of it. It's, it's more than that. It's that big question about how can I use blockchain to solve some problems I have at, you know, at my work, at my organization. So if you're just a technical person, you just develop it, you're gonna receive the specs and you're gonna start building the app, building the platform and you're done with this. But when we talk about the blockchain, you need to have this knowledge about where this is going. So the business part of it is important. The tech literacy is very important too. And if you're a programmer and if you are trying to learn programming, this is your opportunity because there is a real application for it. And also the data analysis. This is another part of the, of the pillars for you to go into the blockchain field and the hacker mentality. We don't have that much information about the, the blockchain technology. It's actually evolving. Every day we have something new. Every day we have you know, a new paper that published, a new research that done, a new, a new part of the technology that will help it. So you have to have this hacker mentality where you can learn this one on the go. So you will find yourself educating yourself by expanding your basis. I did some research about the jobs available for the blockchain. You're going to find that we have, uh, I mean, IBM is hiring architects and uh, companies uh, hiring people like Visa, for example. Visa Research is hiring senior staff research scientists for blockchain and product manager for analytics or the blockchain analytics and uh, blockchain developer, engineer, project manager, and attorneys because of the smart contract or legal consultant. Now, the attorneys, they, they you know, they should jump on this one and educate themselves about the legal concept or the legal part of the smart contract. Because you take the smart contract, a programmer will, will write down the conditions, but who will give him or give her those conditions, those parameters? That should come from somebody who understand the law, understand the, all the different you know, scenarios to be covered in that smart contract. Every salary for the, uh, uh, for the blockchain is uh, a blockchain developer or jobs is about 146,000. That's the average. And it's go all the way to 234. And of course, when you talk about 58,000, that's the beginning as an intern. Seven mistakes 
and blockchain uh, project. Uh, you know, I'd like to bring your attention so, so that will help us really uh, cover everything here. Number one is the misunderstanding or misusing the blockchain technology. Blockchain is more than just uh, recording data on the blockchain. It's way more than that. It has so many features. Uh, decentralization of the, of the consensus, tokenization, smart contract. So if you're really paying for that project and you're paying for this technology, you have to use all the features not just to record the information and say it's safe, it's immutable, there's nobody can change, it's permanent, they're more than that. So this is, the mis this is one of the misunderstanding of the technology. Number two is you assume that it is ready. It's not ready yet. There's so many trial, I mean, beside the big companies like uh, IBM and Microsoft and this, the technology is just entering the growth you know, stage of the product life cycle. There are so many big questions there. And we learn as we go with that. Uh, large scale product or projects uh, is, is uh, immature at this level. There are, there are so many problems facing this. That's why you find a lot of companies will go to uh, big name, big tech company to build their own private blockchain because they have control on the number of the nodes. They have control on the consensus. And even if you are dealing with, with IBM, you can have your own consensus by defining that. It's called uh, pluggable, which means that I would like to have the consensus according to the following, you know, uh, uh, consensus, uh, following parameters. And this is an important one, and I want everybody you really to think about it for a second. When you talk about uh, blockchain, blockchain is not a business solution. It is a foundation level technology, which means you still need the interface, you still need the user experience, you still need the connectivity with the internet, you still need all of these things. So it's there in the, as the foundation and it can build on that. And I showed you the stack of the blockchain and this is exactly what I meant by when I talk about foundation level technology. As a code standing by itself, it's, it's not gonna do anything, but you have to have this interface where people can use it and enter the information. And also you have to have the connectivity to, to, you know, to the internet, connectivity to, to the other networks. And you can, you, can, you can use that one around the foundation to, uh, level here. It's not a complete application. When you look at the, the uh, blockchain as purely as a database of storage, what you are doing is you're wasting your money because you're paying for, uh, you know, for, for a big uh, application with a lot of uh, features. Uh, you know, immutable, trusted record of event, dynamic collections, you know, uh, uh, smart contract, and using that, and, and you pay that one for the price of, the, of, uh, of a database. And if you think that the different blockchain uh, network are talking to each other, uh, you know, I have a bad news for you. Unless you are using some kind of technology like Cosmo that will make it possible for them to communicate with, with each other, then there's no way for them. So there is no, we don't have standards for them to, so we can go across the different platforms from IBM to Amazon to, to, to Microsoft so they can talk to each other and, and, and share some of the information. The uh, smart contract is still a software. It's not gonna solve all the problem. We need to understand the concept of the smart contract. So whatever you have, and the smart contract, that's what's gonna be executed. And there's so many examples about how that failed multiple times because they didn't cover all the uh, different scenarios. And also the governors, who's responsible for mistakes, who's responsible for uh, errors, who's responsible for, for some kind of the problems we are facing, the hacking, uh, at the same time. I mean, if you talk about the public uh, blockchain, you're gonna see that the only thing they talk about it is the technical issues. And the human behaviors or motivation, nobody talk about it. So the government will come and find who hacked, who stole that. I mean, you know, talking about billions of dollars worth of cryptocurrency but taken from those networks and, and because there's no governance. And a private one, yes, you have some kind of a handle on, on the activities. The private uh, blockchain will give you this, this kind of role. Applications, and this is really the last thing we talk about. The blockchain and IoT and AI, uh, this is my, one of my favorite uh, uh, diagrams, it shows you the four stages of the Internet of Things from the census to the network to the platform, the cloud, to the applications, and how the, uh, how the blockchain can, can store the information coming from each one of the uh, you know, uh, components of the Internet of Things and make sure that it's not, it's, nobody can change it. Uh, 
the enterprise blockchain is huge landscape. You can find a lot of big names. If you look at the names here, you're going to see so many of them, actually companies that you know. And also the digital degree. And if you look at the names at the bottom here on the right lower uh, corner, you're going to see some of the companies that I encourage you to check uh, uh, their website. Those companies are really doing the digital uh, degree where you receive the paper degree and also you receive uh, your digital degree as a, you know, as, as a QR where you go to the employer, they scan it and they confirm your transcript, they confirm that you graduated from the school, you don't have to go through the verification process. Walmart is using uh, IBM Food Trust, a well-known application uh, or known blockchain uh, network where they can track down all the, uh, you know, or the food that from the farm until um, until it get to the to the store. So if something happened, they can track it back or trace that one back and find where is that poisoning or tainted food. For the uh, for advertising, they have something called proof of uh, view, which is uh, very quickly. Um, we have only five minutes left for here. Uh, the proof of view is we record the views. So in order for you to pay somebody to uh, by the number of the impression or the views for that ad, uh, there's certain things. Number one, the proof of view will only record uh, the views, it records the views of the people, the user who signed up to that website, for example, like uh, YouTube. And also they will um, only pay for the views that comes from one screen. If you open multiple screens, just one will be the active one. And the third one is they take samples of the video to make sure that it's the right ad or the right program that you're trying to pay that, uh, uh, you know, that actor or actress or YouTuber, famous YouTuber for. So this is, this is one example of the consensus we talk about it, the human factor here. Uh, supply chain is famous for, you know, a famous application. You're going from the blockchain and you document every single uh, change down the road. So when you get to the, to the end of it, you can just look at it. Nobody will change it. Nobody will touch it. And you know that if what you have is different, whatever is on the blockchain, you can, you know that something happened down, you know, uh, you know along that, that path. Uh, DocuSign is using blockchain to confirm the data. So once you sign it, it's fixed, it's mutable, nobody can change it. Starbucks is using it for payment and also for tracking the coffee from the farms to, you know, to the stores and Ticketmaster is doing the same thing. For, uh, you know, um, another project by the United Nations for the Jordan refugees camp, no IDs, you don't have any uh, identification. The Syrian uh, refugees left their country, so they have nothing with them. So they use the biometrics to confirm their identity, the identity of their kids, and so they can receive the services. Or if they want to leave, they will give them some kind of a digital identification, so, so, or some kind of identification so they can move you know, from one place to the other. Uh, the return drug itself, it's, it's used an application called ATTP by SAP and Merck is using this application, Advanced Track and Trace for uh, Pharma. And this one is used uh, to identify the information about the medications. So when you return it, it's, you know that it's coming from, it's one of our medication. It's not something uh, that, that uh, people wanna fool the company by returning something which is not there. Okay, so I'm done with this. This is my, uh, this is my, uh, uh, contact information. You can join me on uh, LinkedIn. I'll be more than happy 